I will pass you over uh, to Jenny, who's going to introduce the work of Grey Eye and then do um, a little bit of a, a workshop in front of us all. Thank you very much. Um, shall we just show the door out, just because you're probably full of downwards and rounders and love a drizzle. We'll just watch the Grey Eye show reel and then I'll try and do something interesting. <laughs> show the show reel. Oh, but actually, it's really interesting that that's come up. It's, um, like it's a play programme, which is um, happening all over the UK. At the moment, our fourth year, we're in Leicester, Birmingham and Coventry. <coughs> our writers at the moment are writing our first full length in Newcastle, Leeds and Hull. The London Lock then, that was... Uh, and it helped me. Royal Court, 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 and Court, 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 about disabled stories or them, but <coughs> it influences how they write. And what we do is we give them full and equal access to space so they don't have to worry. So there's interpreters, there's note takers, there's whatever, or they pick up our cake point before lunch. Somewhere to just go and crash if that's what you need to do, time out. Because <coughs> all the time in our fair have said to us, in their own time, if they try to get onto a mainstream writer's call, they feel that they are, using Richard's word, an object. So suddenly all the other writers are like, oh my god, I'm really interested to write about disability, so how <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm here as a writer. I don't want to be the subject matter. If outside that writer's group, yes, we could talk. It would have been a really interesting journey. We, we're, we're learning so much. And we're, we're still finding it difficult to really identify deaf writers because deaf writers, I think, just want their own space because first language for many is BSL. So we need to rethink how we start. So they can like the tool because you may come on, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is our box, yeah, it's warming up. Is so everyone on there is deaf or disabled, pretty much. A compilation of footage from past productions. The Solid Life of Sugar Water. Different moments of a couple lying in bed, softly lit. A young woman walks away tearful. In bed, the couple kiss. Blood wedding. A woman in a wedding dress. Flowers hang from her wheelchair. A woman signs passionately. A man and woman agitated. Five people in the background signing. A stage lit by neon tubes. A couple embracing. A man rolls on the floor, clutching his chest. A woman dressed in black signs. The woman in her wedding dress watches from the background. Belonging. Performers circling slow and fast on a circus hoop. Two young men hug. A couple outstretched on a hoop. A performer signs. A female wheelchair user moves in a circle. Prometheus awaits. Rhythmical choreography. A woman raises herself on crutches. She casts a huge shadow behind. A giant grid of people suspended in midair, pulsing as they move their limbs. A woman sits on a huge glowing puppet. Fireworks explode behind. The Iron Man. An older boy points. The Iron Man. A giant puppet. The boy screams. Driving away. The Iron Man looks out and beyond. Ensemble. A young woman performs a monologue. A young man signs a monologue. A montage of moments from a full-length play performed by the ensemble. A set made up of washing lines. The ensemble perform. Two young men sign and speak together. The Limbless Night. An offering is made to a female power wheelchair user. Other performers wait. On a large metal scaffold frame, a small woman in a long white dress is lifted up to the top of the structure. The Threpney Opera. A cast of musicians and actors crowd the stage. Performers sing. Two actors tango using a white cane. 
with a large cast singing and playing instruments. The garden, swaying and bouncing in the air, performers in flowing black coats stand at the top of tall flexible poles and on the stage. Reasons to be cheerful. Performers singing and playing instruments vibrantly and raucously. The cast punch the air together. Grey Eye are pretty much the blueprint for what I wish mainstream British theatre was like. Andrew Hayden, Postcards from the Gods. Grey Eye Theatre Company. Grey Eye is a force for change in world class theatre. Breaking down <coughs> barriers, challenging preconceptions, and boldly placing deaf and disabled artists centre stage. Grey Eye rightly holds iconic status nationally and internationally for the innovation and quality of its work. It plays a vital part in the cultural life of this country. Ruth McKenzie, Director, Cultural Olympiad. For more information on Grey Eye, visit www.greyeye.org, supported using public funding by Arts Council England. I'm in I did go on a bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in direct to with really, really big, big puppet when I was doing sports day. And he also <laughs> did Sugar Water. So he's the first director, he's the first disabled director to have a show on the national. But <laughs>
Every time she tried to get up on stage to be with Gerard's character Ian, she would just slide down. And, so, and because of her cold like gait, it just really reinforced the character vulnerability which she just bought into. I re-recorded all the signing. I'll talk a bit about that afterwards, but I've got a real life turn for turps now. I don't know what that's going to be like, so this is brand new for me. And it's for you as an audience to think, some, you might hate this. You know, you, as directors, creative people, you have your own opinion, of course you do. I'm just going with what some of what I did and trying to explore some new stuff. If that makes any sense. Is that alright? Um, it all starts just like. <laughs> but I would like to start, Shipkers, um, from the beginning, and I'm going to have Jude signing for both Kate, Kate and Ian. So you do it from coming into the space, Gerard. So can you go there, Mr. Tooley? And Nikki, your choice. This is the bed. Bathroom over to the left of the stage, the bed to the right of the stage. Your choice whether you want to wheel around or out. I'll let you. Jude, play around with her. Okay. Something might happen. It might be interesting, it might not be. Go. They enter. Kate is amazed at the classiness of the room. Ian comes in, throws a small pile of newspapers on the bed. Goes straight to the minibar and pours himself a large gin. He looks briefly out of the window at the street, then turns back to the boom. I've shat in better places than this. He gulps down the gin. I stink. You want a bath? Shakes her head. Ian goes to the bathroom, and we hear him run the water. Ian comes back in with only a towel around his waist, and a revolver in his hand. He checks it is loaded, and puts it under his pillow. Okay. 
I'm glad you've come. I didn't think you would. He offers her champagne. <coughs> Shakes her head. <coughs> I was worried. What, this? It don't matter. I didn't mean that. You sound unhappy. Pops the champagne and pours them both a glass. What we celebrating? Doesn't answer. He goes to the window and looks out. I hate this city. Stinks. Wogs and packies taking over. You shouldn't call them that. Why not? Let's just go, let's just go back. Sometimes you have to really make some really tough decisions. It's about these two. Ian and Kate. So I want to try and do a try. Let's see whether it works. We do a split screen. So we've got Ian and Kate over to us. Towards the bar door, I'll just stay near the bed, and Jude and Daryl will be more near to the bathroom, and see what happens if we've got the two narratives running side by side. Same place? Let's go from that same place. Um, I'm glad you've come. So, good, it might be easier to sit in the middle, so I'll come in the middle. So. So I should you sign to each other for that you too. And just ignore him. <laughs> 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 Physically, they're on each other at the same time. 
So, thank you. In that, in that sort of, when you're, you are setting out the images, mm. it's not about spoon feeding an audience, but it's giving them some direction where they can, where they can sort of like start to feel safe about where they look. I know for me, death, I'm going to be looking at these two. <laughs> but, um, but I would look at those two. So that, in a way, is very clear. But does that feel like a bit of a cheat? Because they are also on the stage. I want to be able to access both. So let's just seduce Sweet Pea. Can you come stand next to that behind the key? And Daryl. The thing is, that. <laughs> so, we need to be really thinking about what's the queuing system. No. Not going to be on stage doing line, line, lines in the actual show. To really set up what will become, I think, a beautiful but very complicated queuing system. Or does it have to be complicated if both? <coughs> they're really, really working together. So, Darrell always knows what the four of them work to set up their queuing. And it's a step acting myself way back, or here in company. Some of my cues were you know, hair behind the ear or just a fold of the arms or just fucking wig. But I had to rely on those actors to do that, otherwise I <coughs> lose my place. So it makes actors work differently. They really have to own every single beat of that show because they're supporting and working with somebody else. I know that happens anyway, but this is almost like another layer of real ownership. Okay, let's see what it looks like with you two behind. But Joel, can you slightly be put on the face or maybe like that so that Dale has access to and you stand behind you? Yeah. So if you go behind City stinks. Wogs and fatties taking over. You shouldn't call them that. Why not? It's not very nice. And you a nigger love. Ian, don't. You like our coloured brethren, do you? Don't mind them. Oh, grow up. There's Indians at the day centre where my brother goes. They're really polite. So they should be. He's friends with some of them. Retard, isn't he? No. He's got learning difficulties. I suppose. No, he's not. I'm glad my well, son's not a Joey. So, uh, Nikki and Gerard, you're going quite fast. Right. Yeah. You've got to be you've got to be aware of Daryl and Jude behind you. Yeah. So you've got to give them the space. <laughs> <laughs> because because so so I know you've got the, I know you've got the text in your I know you've got the text in your hand. Yes. And it's very very difficult. But just allow just allow the words to breathe a bit more. Yeah. Right. yeah give, you, give yourselves a bit more a bit more space, and that just allows Jude and Daryl to, to, to be in sync. This is why he's got a show of the national. Add add a show. Same place. Same place. Same place. And Gerard, yeah. when you say about the hate in the city, as much as possible, you say it to Daryl. Yeah. Where is that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Why not? It's not very nice. You a nigger look. Yeah. Okay, just sorry. On that, are you a nigger look? Can you turn to Stu and ask about that? Can you turn around to Daryl and ask him that? Just go back a little bit. Go back to 
much lower place. <coughs> Hate this city. Stinks. Wogs and buckets taking over. You shouldn't call them that. Why not? It's not very nice. You a nigger look. Ian, don't. You like our coloured brethren? So good. It changes the game. Mm. Did that, did that, did that jar, or did it feel natural and acceptable and go with the flow sort of thing, or? It's interesting. I think somebody used the word head fuck earlier. <laughs> Joey. Don't call him that. It's your mother I feel okay, sorry. So it's getting a bit mm. it's untangling. But but how we could continue to play with that, but it may have to really think what you do with an act you have to think about every single line, why, who, what, where, or what feels right that it's those two. What feels right if it's these two? What feels right if it's those two? Until you find that real feeling, this, this is right. And sometimes you find those things when it doesn't feel right and it feels really wrong, but it's the right reason, if you know what I mean. One of the conversations we had when we were doing this was everything in round brackets gulped down the gym. I don't know, I'm right, I mean, I'm scared, I'm fucking brilliant, I'm going to smoke, I'm going to be drinking. I'm like, I'm sorry, no, you're not, darling, you're just going to be saying we're doing those things. It's really absurd, isn't it? I was alright taking my clothes off. I mean, both half hours, like that. <laughs> um, but that thing around, um, you know, Kate enters the room when she's describing the, the hotel layout and the gun and all the rest of it. That's visual for deaf people, but it's, it's good clarification of what's happening for visual blind and visually impaired audience. But I argue be a deaf audience, me included, what, what, there's someone speaking on stage, what they're saying, what they're saying, oh, get really arsy, because I think they're missing out. So one of the things I have to think about, and I haven't got an answer for this, so maybe you will, is how do you... How, in this particular play, how do I work that? In the fucking opera, we were really clear, because Brett's like, alright, okay, we've got 
sometimes it's at first people could take and forget our lines for death block. We've got a bit of science stuff for death block. And we've got all those descriptions. Death block is not for you. <laughs> Both clear, out there, for all the audience, so they knew what was what. This is very, very different. So I have a I don't have that else in there. Ian tries to push the door shut and draws his revolver. That was lovely, but I had a line before you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Outside is a soldier with a sniper's rifle. Ian tries to push the door shut and draws his revolver. The soldier pushes the door open and takes Ian's gun easily. What's that? <coughs> Ian looks down and realises he's still holding a rasher of bacon. Pig! The soldier holds out his hand. Ian gives him the bacon, and he eats it quickly, rind and all. <coughs> Got any more? No. Got any more? I, no. Got any more? Ian points to the tray underneath the bed. The soldier bends down carefully, never taking his eyes off Ian, and takes the tray from under the bed. He straightens up and glances down at the food. Two. I was hungry. I bet. The soldier sits on the edge of the bed and very quickly devours both breakfasts. Actually, in that. Oh, I must. Who? I can smell the sex. He begins to search the room. <coughs> I 
You were a journalist. I, I. Passport. What for? Soldier locks it in. Okay. But does, does the stuff that work? Does it feel like that Dabble is quite static? Just a pattern. It changes the dynamic that you had in the previous scene where it seemed that the characters were shared. This becomes about interpreting what one actor is doing. That's what feels on the side. Yeah. The really good point. So shall we go back and do that? But which character do you feel more? At the moment, I can, do, I can go with both. At the moment, I'm doing the role shift. And it depends what you want represented more. True for which one? The soldier. soldier. I'm going to go with the soldier, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, can I, well, just to make, just make life more difficult, sorry, can I just contradict you? Can you stick with Ian and Rose, you know, faffy faffy stuff, can you come and study the soldier? So we've got four actors. Yeah. Sorry, you're saying that. Got Atkins here. <laughs> so. So, yeah. Round of applause for Amit. So thank you guys. <laughs> so, we now have four men on stage, three white men and one Asian man. One deaf, one visually impaired, and two disabled men. So again, the dynamic shifts. Do something interesting. A Gerard, and so Daryl, feel free to be with. So that whole thing around. I mean, one thing is because because you're talking about something. I don't know whether it's very silent. You don't necessarily need to talk about it. You talk about it because you've got it. Yeah. So, so David, you yes. can choose who you take, you take the bar off down or. Down to if I've got a gun, you can be looking at it. I think I'm holding it. Yeah. I've known him since he was 19 years old. Outside is a soldier with a sniper's rifle. Ian tries to push the door shut and draws his revolver. So pushes the door open and takes Ian's gun easily. What's that? Ian looks down and realises he's still holding a ration of bacon. Pig! The soldier can holds out his hand. Can you have your you've got the pig up there? David, can you come where we are on to that one? Come, come on to to Dello to get your pig. And you come with our as well. Just go to the pig bit. Pig. The soldier holds out his hand. <coughs> Ian gives him the bacon. He eats it quickly, rind and all. The soldier wipes his mouth. Got any more? No. Got any more? I, I, no. He points to the tray under the bed. The soldier bends carefully, never taking his eyes off the rifle and Ian, and takes the tray from under the bed. He straightens up and glances down at the floor. Two. Two. I was hungry. 
the soldier sits on the edge of the bed and very quickly devours both breakfasts. See him there. Who? So, that is she in there. Just go back to that bit and then just go with her. And then Ambo will walk over to that and push him out of the way. Yeah. Very quickly devoured both breakfasts. See you there. Who? You can smell the sex. So that, that feels like a moment. So is she in there? Oh, who? Look at, look over at him. Yeah. Yeah. Just go back from up. Yeah. Mark in the mouth of there. Okay. <laughs> he wipes his mouth and very quickly devours both breakfasts. Maybe the other way around. He devours both <laughs> breakfasts and wipes his mouth. <laughs> The soldier sits on the edge of the bed and very quickly devours both breakfasts. She in there. Who? I can smell the sex. Are you were jealous. I. Passport. What for? Okay. Looks at him. Adele, an actor interpreter, 
when same costume, she had the same fertility as Kate, as Jenny. So she signed that middle bit. And then act, the first act, an act called, a deaf act called Neil Fox. So when Gerard was talking about smoking and drinking, we filmed mm. Foxy drinking, signing. And sometimes, because it, it, it puts a lot of pressure on actors, I love it. <laughs> because actors, no, no doubt would ever say, oh, in this moment I'm going to do a third pirouette, because I feel like it. Just don't do it. <laughs> so actors, when I get the chair, in the moment, I want to talk, no, you can't. <laughs> because you, you are working with three other actors. Yes, they're on the screen, but they are part of this ensemble. So they all have to be really mindful of it. Gerard said, but Jenny, I can't see that fucking screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gerard, right, let's work this one out. So how did the others cue him? So it was a, a really intricate set of everything. But every single word that Sarah Kane wrote was on that stage. We're not going to do a rape scene. But David, straddling on top of Gerard, holding on to his belt, talking about what he is doing. You can't get away from it. You might not want to look at that visual picture, but you've got it somewhere, you've got to hear it. So you couldn't escape. And for me, I felt that I was doing her play justice for those very reasons. She didn't want us to escape. So the learning and the complications, it was a bit short in the rehearsal process, wasn't it? We, we learned a lot, and I'm not saying we got it right by any stretch of the imagination. And anyway, Mark Kelly and Mel said, John, you know those round brackets? Sarah didn't mean them to be spoken, you know. She meant them to flow with lines. <laughs> so the moment's a bit late now. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, so that's what I do. And that's why I feel so lucky that every show, we unpack and try to find what's the right thing, but it comes from the play. And then I get the best cast I can get, and they bring with them what their stuff, and then, then we play around with it. Because I need to access my own play, not deaf. Obviously, sign it captures don't be part of that mess. But it's about making sure we make the right decisions. So I'm doing the Hands of Denied album for Manchester Royal Exchange uh, in the round. And all the audio descriptions, Sign of Blood Wedding will be live. And, all, and we've got four, three deaf actors who will own a sign of it. Nick is the sister director, she knows what she's doing, I don't. So that's a little bit about what we do. Um, that whole thing, Jenny, Jenny, how do you work with the same actors? just do. Mm -hmm. But the thing about finding the aesthetics of access, that's just, that's interesting, that's what we should all be doing. But these guys, if they're good, they're good, we get on with them. That's the end of that story. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>